We want to find the surface area of revolution about the y-axis of y equals the cube root of six x over the interval where x is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to four thirds. So the graph of the given function over this interval is graphed here. So again, we know the interval for x is zero to four thirds. We can see from the graph the interval for y would be from zero to two. It's pretty easy to see when x is zero, y would be zero. Let's just verify that when x is four thirds, y is equal to two. So we'd have y equals the cube root of six times four thirds. Well, six times four thirds is equal to eight, and the cube root of eight is equal to two. So now that we have the graph of our function over the given interval, we have rotation about the y-axis. So if we rotate this curve about the y-axis, we'd have this surface, and our goal is to find the area of the surface, or the surface area. So looking at our notes, we'll have to decide whether we want to integrate with respect to y or with respect to x. And these two integrals are equivalent, so let's talk about y. f of y equals x, so in both cases, f of y and x give the horizontal distance from any point on the curve to the axis of rotation. For example, this horizontal distance here would be x, which is also equal to f of y. And then the square root of one plus f prime of y squared dy equals ds, and so does the square root of one plus f prime of x squared dx. So these are both equal to ds, which represents the arc length, and whether we integrate along the x-axis or the y-axis, we would get the same arc length. So you might be asking which formula we should use. We want to use the simpler one, which mainly comes down to deciding whether f prime of y squared or f prime of x squared is going to be simpler. And notice how the given function f of x or y equals the cube root of six x. So to find f prime of x or y prime, we'd have rational exponents and also have to apply the chain rule. So for this example, let's go ahead and use this formula here. In the next example, we'll use this formula. So because we need to find f of y and f prime of y, we need to write this as a function of y, so we'll have to solve it for x. So if we have y equals the cube root of six x, let's first undo the cube root by cubing both sides of the equation. That would give us y cubed equals six x, dividing both sides by six. We now know x equals y cubed divided by six, which means f of y is equal to y cubed divided by six. Let's also find f prime of y. So f prime of y would be equal to, well we'd multiply by three, three six is one half, so we'd have one half y squared of three one y divided by two. Because we'll integrate with respect to y, the limit integration will be from zero to two, which means the surface area is equal to two pi times the integral from zero to two of Again, f of y is y to the third divided by six. And then we have the square root of one plus f prime of y squared. That would be y squared divided by two squared dy. Let's evaluate this on the next slide. Let's go ahead and factor out the one six. That would give us two six or one third. If we want pi over three times the integral from zero to two we still have y cubed. Let's write this using a rational exponent. So we have the quantity one plus the square of y squared over two would be y to the fourth divided by four raised to the one half. Let's perform u substitution, where u is equal to one plus y to the fourth divided by four. So du is equal to derivative of one is zero the derivative of y to the fourth divided by four, we'd multiply by four, so we'd have four over four, which is one, and then y to the third, so we just have y to the third dy. So looking at the integral, because du equals y to the third dy, all of this, in terms of u, would be, well, this would be u to the one half, and y to the third dy equals du. So we have pi over three, the antiderivative with respect to u would be u to the three halves divided by three halves, or two thirds u to the three halves. So with respect to y, we have two thirds times quantity one plus y to the fourth 
divided by 4 to the 3 halves. Let's go ahead and factor out the 2 thirds. That'd give us 2 pi divided by 9. And then when y is 2, we'd have the quantity 1 plus 2 to the 4th divided by 4 raised to the 3 halves. And y is 0, we'd have minus 1 to the 3 halves. So simplifying, 2 pi divided by 9 times 16 divided by 4 is 4, 1 plus 4 is 5, so we have 5 to the 3 halves minus 1 to the 3 halves is just 1. So this would be the exact value of the surface area, which would be square units. Let's also get our decimal approximation. So we have 2 pi divided by 9, open parenthesis, 5 raised to the power of 3 divided by 2, right arrow, minus 1, close parenthesis, enter. So the approximate surface area is 7.1072 square units. So going back to the first slide, we just found the surface area of this surface here, which was generated by rotating this curve over this interval about the y-axis. I hope you found this helpful.